Now I'd like to introduce you uh, to Chantal Rackley, our presenter for today. Hi Chantal and welcome. Hi there, thank you very much. No problem. All right, so I guess we'll go ahead and get started then. Uh, I'd like to first of all start by saying thank you very much to Charity Village for hosting this webinar as well as uh, Robin and Marina over there at uh, Charity Village. Thank you both very much for your support during this. As well as the YWCA of Metro Vancouver, uh, specifically the marketing team over here, Marina and Livio. Uh, thank you both very much. My team here at the North Shore Work BC site, I uh, couldn't do it without your support. And then finally, of course, everybody out there that's listening. So uh, good morning or afternoon, depending on where it is you're listening from. I really do appreciate you uh, joining us for today's webinar. So let's go ahead and get started with, uh, with today's goals. Uh, first and foremost, uh, understanding the importance of incorporating networking into your job search. A strategic job search involves many components, including networking. Learning ways to expand your network and have a great time while doing it. So we'll start with who you know, your family, your friends, references, maybe joining some associations and so forth. Introducing yourself to new contacts. Uh, that is definitely a stressor for a lot of the job seekers that I work with. So we'll be talking about the 30 second speech or elevator pitch, however you'd like to refer to it. And then finally, we cannot talk about networking without talking about social media. So we'll chat a little bit about that as well. Uh, of course, I will tell you a little bit about who I am, and then uh, once I do that, we'll get straight into the what, how, why of networking, uh, pretty much networking 101, also known as chatting with people. And then, of course, your network and how to use it, so that, that includes planning, researching, maintaining that connection or those connections once you make it, that's uh, very important there. Uh, and then introducing yourself, as I mentioned, that's the 30-second speech the elevator pitch, and of course you're going to want to customize that for the listener or for the audience that you're speaking to. Um, social media, we're going to specifically a little bit more towards Twitter and LinkedIn, and then we'll finish off with some closing questions. I'd like to start off with this quote. I have been saying this quote for years, and um, I'm pretty sure I made up this quote, and I can't find who to cite it, uh, who to cite for it. But I'm pretty sure I actually did make this up. Uh, I got to say I love this quote. I love it because I really do believe it. If people know how they can help you, and they can, they will. If people know how they can help you, and they can, they will. This emphasizes the importance of understanding your needs and asserting those needs. If people know how they can help you when they can, they will. So this lead, leads to the first step of networking, which is having a plan. And so we'll uh, be moving into that momentarily. So a little bit about myself. In the province of British Columbia, I am a certified career development practitioner. And I am currently working with YWCA. That's the YWCA Work BC North Shore office, so I'm specifically working out of North Vancouver. I'm a career advisor and facilitator here, so I primarily work one-to-one -one in a drop-in setting with job seekers, as well I also develop and deliver curriculum around all things related to uh, job search. Uh, so a little bit about my own path. Uh, years ago, when I first got into this industry, or when I wanted to first get into this industry, I actually responded to a charity village posting for a volunteer uh, with the YWCA. So thank you very much, Charity Village, for that, and thank you, YWCA, for posting that volunteer posting. I uh, read the posting, and I put together a targeted application and sent it in. And for, for all of you out there that have volunteered in the past, you do know that it is very much like a job application. So you submit an application, you then uh, go in for an interview, maybe two, and then you are offered the volunteer role. And so that's essentially what happened. Shortly after I started volunteering with YWCA, I went around and started meeting people in the industry. So people that were working in other similar centers or similar programs, uh, but I wanted to get an understanding for what kinds of services were being delivered out there and in, 
which demographic they were working with, so the types of clients that they were working with. So I went around and um, I discovered a lot about myself when I was getting this information about where I wanted to start my career and where I saw myself fitting. And luckily, uh, where I saw myself fitting was actually where I was. It was it was with the YWCA, but it did. It, 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 my research confirmed that for me, and so uh, I, I use networking in order to broaden my, my network, but also to really see where I saw myself fitting. Um, throughout my professional career, I continue to network. Uh, this really did help me with my own professional development, move through uh, the YWCA, move throughout the industry as well, and I now use it, of course, to assist my clients, uh, job seekers, as uh, you know, to connect with employers, and vice versa, employers to connect with uh, with clients. So it has really been uh, very beneficial for me. Absolutely, very important tool. My secret networking trick, um, you know, if you know that you're going to uh, an event and you're feeling a little bit nervous about it, might I suggest that you do a little bit of research ahead of time, figure out who's going to be there. Because when you can go there equipped with ways that you can help other people in their networking needs, it puts a lot less pressure on you and it actually, actually makes for a much more enjoyable experience. So that's my little networking trick. I use it myself and uh, perhaps that's something you can incorporate into your, your bag of tricks as well. Okay, so what is networking? Well, simply put, it is chatting with people. And if this is an intimidating um, activity for you, then you might want to take semantics and use it to your advantage and rename networking for what it really is, which is chatting with people. How do I network? Okay, well, simply put, okay, I'm sorry. There is no simple answer here. It does depend on your purpose. It depends on your objective. And once you've established that, then things do become a lot more easy for you. Why network? Well, knowing that it can expand who you know and who knows you, I put the question back to you, why not? Why not network? So what is network? Networking, rather. Networking is connecting with people. It will help you uncover information about yourself so you can use that to your advantage. It helps you uncover in information about various careers you might be researching, industries, training suggestions. Training suggestions, that's extremely important. If you're willing to put time, energy, money, brain power hopefully, into a training program, then you want to make sure that it's the right training program for you, for the industry, and that it's actually even required and recognized. So you want to maybe take some time to um, Visit your network and find those answers. Networking is a great way to meet other people that you should be talking to. So look to your immediate network and look at ways that you can use them, if you will, to expand your current network. Networking is great to exchange and share ideas and also to promote yourself. And in many cases, this might be why a lot of you are listening today, to uncover ways that you can promote yourself uh, or perhaps the service you offer in your, in your job search. Essentially, networking is conducting market research to help you make a decision. I'd like you to take a minute and just consider uh, what your preferred networking method is at this point. Do you prefer to go online? Are you very comfortable with social media, perhaps? Um, perhaps you have a few uh, platforms that you prefer to use. You might really enjoy getting out there face-to-face -face and chatting with people um, directly. That might be where you're comfortable. Or perhaps through family and friends. Take a minute to think about that. And then once, you, once you've established your preferred networking method, I might challenge you to deviate from that a little bit and pick up one or two of the other methods or, or add them to your, to your networking toolbox. I challenge you a little bit there. How do I network? Well, first of all, we network pretty much every day. 
and sometimes it's more natural, sometimes it's on more of a casual basis, but we network every day. We network in order to find a good mechanic, good quality childcare, good training programs. We network just about every day. So why not use networking as a job search strategy? How to network. First and foremost, have a plan. What is it that you need? Is it career information? Are you thinking about transitioning from the field of administration into finance? Well, then you might want to go out there and chat with people who are currently working in, in the field of finance. Is it for company or industry contacts? What do you need? What kind of timeline are you looking at? Is there an application deadline that you should be paying attention to? Get on social media. That's easier said than done, and I do get that, but yes, it does require a plan in itself. And we'll talk uh, a little bit more about that in just a moment. Join a group or an association. Charity Village has an events by region section on their website, and you can search for events in your area that you might want to go to. Now, they might not necessarily even be categorized as networking events. They might just be events of interest for you. And sometimes that's a great place to start. Start with where you actually want to be and then build from there. Meetup.com is another website. I'm sure a lot of you out there are quite familiar with that in order to join groups, like-minded groups, associations, and so forth. Do your research. So what do you already know? Avoid asking what you should already know and just Use it more to, to build on what you know. Who do you already know? I'd like to talk right now a little bit about references. Um, consider the references that you might have. For example, if a reference is willing to speak of your abilities, they're probably also willing to assist you in other ways. They might have some really great tips for you that you can use right about now. So if uh, a few of you are out there and you've been pondering contacting people to ask them whether or not there'll be a reference for you, might I suggest you pick up the phone or send that email and send the request. It's really important that the people you'd like to be your references know that you are in an active job search right now. Use networking as a way to supplement the information. So that goes back to, to A, what do you already know and then supplement from there. So you might want to start on the computer, conducting some research, um, you know, using various, various means through the computer, but then finish off by going directly to the source. So uh, start with the computer, go directly to uh, an individual for actual uh, information. Uh, I like to say start with your fingers and finish with your feet. Give back and keep in touch. So listen and learn here. What are ways that you can give back to this individual? Can you reciprocate? Can you help them out? Chances are you probably can. Right? Is, there, is there any opportunity for you to make a connection for someone? That's an excellent way to give back to someone. Do an e-introduction. I've once introduced people via email that I thought ought to know each other because they were very similar in a, uh, from a professional standpoint. And so I simply sent them both an email uh, and said, so-and-so, meet so-and-so, now go. And you just kind of let it happen and let them, let them go from there and uh, they, they really will appreciate that gesture. Follow them, or sorry, for at the very least, you, you do want to make sure to send a thank you note or an email if someone has taken the time to meet with you and provide information. I strongly recommend you do that. And again, this is a really great way to keep in touch with someone. Follow them on social media or connect, well, including connecting with them on LinkedIn. Either way, be sure to follow up on referrals that they've given you. Because one question you do want to ask someone that you're meeting with is, is there anyone else you would recommend I talk to? I'm really looking to expand my knowledge base here, and is there anyone else either here at the company or in the industry that you would suggest I talk to? And make sure that you follow up on those referrals. It shows that you respect their suggestions, and it's a really great way 
to keep in touch at the same time. So things that you want to consider when building your network. Your neighbors, start close by. So start with people you know that uh, you're quite friendly with, family, friends, neighbors, uh, and so forth. Previous colleagues, we've touched on this already. It's so important to connect with those references. Uh, I do challenge you to get out there, give them a call, send them an email, and then keep in touch with those references. Uh, let them know what's going on and, and so forth, and anytime they should be expecting a phone call from an employer. Like-minded folks, join an association. Many associations out there do have um, fees, uh, annual fees, uh, but usually they're, they're pretty reasonable. Um, but it's so worth it because associations offer so many ways for you to network and meet like-minded individuals in your industry, either through uh, training, uh, training days, through conferences, um, whatever it might be. Alumni, have a look at your college or university uh, alumni, if, if that's appropriate for you, and see if maybe there's some services that will, uh, that will encourage networking amongst the alumni. Attending conferences and so forth. Volunteer. Volunteer to give back to your community, to develop excellent skills, and to expand your network. There are many, many benefits to volunteering. Taking a workshop or a course, and there are plenty of uh, low cost and sometimes even free workshops or courses that are out there, might I suggest that if they offer this workshop or this course online or in person, take the in person option and this will allow you to, first of all, get out there, get out there and meet people, perhaps practice the presentation speech that we're just about to cover in, uh, in a few slides. Um, but it will get you out there and building, uh, building your network, establishing that face-to-face -face rapport. So if they offer that, uh, might, I, might I suggest you do the in-person option. Play a sport, join a club, take a hike. Um, chat with people while you're doing this. Again, there's, so meetup.com comes to mind for a lot, of, uh, a lot of these types of activities and so forth. Um, but stretch yourself a little bit. Right? If you're used to going uh, a little bit beyond your comfort zone, might I suggest you stretch that a little bit further and, um, and, and you know, reach out and chat with people while you're doing something that you really enjoy. Networking events. In my uh, neighborhood, in my city, uh, it's North Vancouver, we have a Chamber of Commerce. It's the North Vancouver Chamber of Commerce and they're very, very proactive. And they host a variety of networking events, and I'm sure that you'll find the same thing in your city, in your neighborhood. Um, they host a variety of networking events, uh, specifically the two that come to mind. There's uh, a sit-down breakfast networking event that they host, and they do this once a month, and they do what's called the business after five networking events, again, once a month. Um, the two types are quite different in that the first kind, it's a meal, and you go and you fill up your plate with all the goodies, the breakfast goodies, and then you sit down at a table, and it's very natural to sit down and have a conversation over a meal, and so that's what this kind of uh, networking event promotes, and it's a much easier way to chat with people if you're a novice networker. The business after five is also a really great way to network, and it's more mingling. So you're kind of working the room a little bit. Um, the only problem with the business after five for the novice networker is that um, you, it, it can sometimes be a little bit cliquey. So uh, you, know, you might want to start off with something like the breakfast networking event and then move from there. Um, go with, have a, a wing man or a wing woman when you're going to these networking events. I remember once going to a business after five with a colleague. Uh, this colleague was very outgoing and uh, I am comfortable going to networking events, but I find that when I go to them, I tend to spend a lot of time chatting with fewer people rather than working the room. That just isn't my style. Well, she worked the room. And it got to the point where I would be chatting with one or two people and people were coming to me because she would work the room, find out what they did, and then say, oh, you need to talk to my colleague Chantal. And she would send them over to me. It was the easiest, most productive networking event I'd ever been to. So have a wing woman or a wing, uh, wing man when it comes to attending those networking events. And um, 
yeah, I think it would be very helpful. Social media, we will be talking about that, again, specifically Twitter and LinkedIn. The end goal when it comes to networking is to increase the amount of people who know of your existence. Increase the amount of people who know of your existence. And here we have a networking web that I think really demonstrates, really demonstrates that. The thing with networking um, that I have experienced is that opportunities will not come through people who directly know you. So you, they don't have to know you per se, but they definitely have to know of you, of your existence. And so attending these events, speaking to your immediate contacts, your immediate network expands into their network. So it becomes very much a web, like you see here. Now we're moving into the why. The why of networking. Well, uh, first and foremost, you have much more control over the process. In all my years as a career advisor, I would say the most common complaint that I've heard from job seekers is the lack of control over the process. This incredibly impacts self-esteem and motivation. I have seen it firsthand. It really does. The amount of control that people have in their lives is directly related to satisfaction. Control over the process. I cannot emphasize that enough. It puts you back in the driver's seat. It also allows you to have more of a targeted approach. It allows you to make an educated choice in your own job search direction. Okay? And this targeted approach is based on criteria that you've set out for yourself based on the information that you've uncovered when you've gone out and done this research. Also, it also helps you to stay connected and expand your professional network so that in the, for your future professional development. Right? As I mentioned when I first started the webinar, um, that, that network that I developed early on in my career through all the information I was gathering really helped me move uh, pr throughout my professional career and develop myself on a professional level. So maintain those connections in order to, to uh, have continued control over your own professional development. More control over the process. Here we have it, the self-introduction speech, the 30-second speech, your elevator pitch, whatever it might be. Here we're continuing on with the how of networking. You'll notice um, in the world of, of, of job seeking that a lot of the terms come from uh, the field of sales and marketing. Um, when it comes to developing your own self-introduction or your 30-second speech, whatever you, however you want to refer to it, I might suggest that you develop it in point form. If you were to write out your 30-second uh, speech in this beautifully written, eloquent paragraph, um, it does not sound natural. And in fact, when you go back to recite it in the real world, you might try to recapture how beautifully you wrote it, but that's not how we talk. How we write is not how we speak. Um, so I might suggest that you develop it in point form. This will help it sound much more natural, much less scripted. And um, another, another way to practice it is to perhaps send yourself a voice message, a voice message reciting your self-introduction speech. Even record yourself on video so you can see how you look talk when you're talking about yourself. Hello, nice to meet you. What do you do? Right, what do I do? Chances are, if you are at any event, whether it's a party or a formal networking event, you will be asked this question probably in the first five or ten seconds of attending that event. It's, it's pretty common to, to ask somebody that question. And we also respond with, well, I am a I am a career advisor. So we hold a lot of weight in terms of what we do. Um, do not include a job title when you're reciting back your 30-second speech. The first thing you want to make sure you do is that you're customizing it based on the audience. Who is the person that's listening to your response? 
So your audience characteristics are extremely important here. Is this a party? Is it a networking event? Where are you and who are you speaking to? It must be customized based on your audience. Tell them what you've done and what it is you're now wanting to do. The thing is, is that we all have skills, but it doesn't necessarily mean that we want to use those skills in the future. We might be really, really great. Listen, I love cooking, and I, I think I'm pretty good at it. I really like entertaining and, and hosting people and so forth in my home on my own time. I don't necessarily want to do it in a commercial environment. It's not me. I know that. So I have the skills. I don't necessarily want to use it in a professional capacity. It's the same thing here. What you've done in the past isn't necessarily what you want to do in the future. So tell them a little bit of both. Include the skills that you have and want to use. Less is more. You've got to keep your audience engaged here. So that's where the 30-second timeline comes in handy. You can easily lose their interest. And one way to bring them back is with your body language. Maintain eye contact. Smile. Uh, speak confidently about yourself and about your abilities and about where you want to see yourself. And then ask them about them. Ask them about them. Include them in the conversation. There might be a way that you can help them out at the same time. You might be able to reciprocate. Okay, so here we have one in action. I will not recite this for you. I'll, I'll give you all a little bit of time to read it through. Okay, so as you can see, uh, this individual worked previously as a software engineer. He explains what he's done in the past, but he also talks about what he'd like to do in the future. And then at the end here, so with that he says, I'm looking to get into corporate training in the technical area. I'm new to this area, so at this point we'll be inserting a call to action. Okay, call to action. Give them... Give them some guidance. If people know how they can help you, and they can, they will. So for example, if this person works in the industry, you might say, so if you know of anyone who, who I could chat with, please go ahead and let me know. And if they're not currently working in the industry, you might just ask for any general leads that they come across. You do not know who their network is. You don't know who they know. All right, social media. Okay, so at the beginning I said I'm going to take that quote. If people know how they can help you and they can, they will. And I, I've looked it up. I can't find anyone who, who quoted that. So I'm going to go ahead and, you know, like I said, I, I'm going to take that one. This one, however, uh, there's a few people credited for it. So I'm just going to go ahead and read out the quote. It's a, it's a good one, though. Uh, LinkedIn is for people you know. Facebook Facebook is for people you used to know, and Twitter is for people you want to know. Of course, there are plenty of other tools out there, uh, but for the sake of today, I'm going to chat primarily about LinkedIn and Twitter. Uh, again, I want you to just take a moment to consider which social media sites you like to use for professional networking, and I'm just going to put up kind of the main ones up here. So we have uh, LinkedIn which I think is, uh, of course, one of the most popular ones. Twitter, yes, people can use Facebook for professional networking, absolutely. Or perhaps there's another website that you, um, that you prefer to use. Which tools are you drawn to? All right, so things we must consider when we're moving into the world of social media. First and foremost, who are you? Who do you want to be? In, on social media. When you open up that Twitter account, who will you be? Will you be a job seeker? Or will you be perhaps a professional in your industry? Who will you be? Based on that, who would you like your audience to be? If it's on LinkedIn, who would you like to start building your network with? Which groups would you like to join? That will dictate who your audience will be. If it's on Twitter, who would you 
we like to start following, because when you start to follow people, perhaps that will encourage them to follow you as well. So who would you like your audience to be? When you sign yourself up for a LinkedIn or Twitter account or some other social media platform, please take the time to learn the tools that each of these social media platforms provide. Excellent tools, sometimes a bit overwhelming because there is a lot there, um, but please take the time to learn the tools and then use them. It reminds me of a movie I saw once. I'm sure a lot of you know this movie. It's called Chef. And in this movie, there's a, a, a very well-known chef, and he was recently given a very poor review from a very well-known food critic. So a lot of people read this food critic's uh, review about this chef. Well, this chef was livid. He went home. His teenage daughter opened up a Twitter account for him. And before learning the tools of Twitter, he wrote a scathing comment to this food critic. He thought he sent this scathing comment directly and privately to the food critic when in fact he posted it to all of his followers, which in fact started a Twitter war. Um, so uh, please learn the tools uh, before you use them. I don't want to see anybody out there uh, starting any Twitter wars and we've certainly seen it. We've heard a lot of uh, horrible social media related stories, so please, please learn those tools. When you're ready, do it. If not now, when? Open up the account and get going. Start building your online profiles. Okay, so other things to consider when you are uh, uh, opening up some social media accounts. So the first thing is you might want to consider taking a workshop. I'm sure a lot of your local libraries offer some free social media workshops out there. There are certainly some webinars that you can take. YouTube has some really great tutorials. Um, so these tutorials, uh, it, some of them are quite long and we're talking close to an hour and so forth and uh, we all have sort of t short attention spans when it comes to uh, viewing things online. So there are plenty of other ones that you can that you can watch on YouTube that are one, two, three minutes in length that give you really great starting points. So consider taking a workshop. Use a clear current picture and make sure that you're smiling in it. This is their way to, and your way, to build rapport with an audience without even meeting them. Um, you might want to consider taking, uh, having a photo that reflects the industry that you are either a part of or want to be a part of. So if you are an active outdoor person and you want to connect with an active outdoor company, then by all means that picture can reflect you in an active outdoor setting. Uh, but you do still want to make sure that it's a close enough picture that they can see your face, they can see your eyes, and they can see your smile. Quality versus quantity. Build up your accounts with your current network first and foremost, and then if you're on LinkedIn, maybe consider joining groups. Once you join groups on LinkedIn, that will give you access to other members of the group. If you're on Twitter, you might want to consider following uh, you know, certain people, following certain companies, so forth. Um, make sure that it is quality over quantity. And when I get to LinkedIn, I'll talk a little bit about uh, uh, connecting with people in order to expand your LinkedIn network. Tell people who you are. On LinkedIn, of course, that goes without saying because it's pretty much your whole professional background on there, on that profile. But in something like Twitter, they give you a small, uh, a small little section early on to tell people who you are. Uh, so again, are you the job seeker? Are you a professional in your industry that's able to provide people with information? Who are you? Make sure to take the opportunity, uh, opportunity to tell people who you are. Give more, take less. Okay, give more, take less. So for every time, every one time you take through social media, and that could include putting a question out there to the general population, asking a question perhaps about training or about a company, that's you taking. But for every time you take, give back three or four times. And giving back could look like you liking somebody's comment or liking somebody's article. 
introducing somebody online as well, maybe two people in your network that you think ought to know each other. This is you giving back. So again, the general rule of thumb, take once, give back three or four times. Okay, so let's chat a little bit about Twitter. Twitter, you got to build it up. You got to build it up and make sure that you establish your identity. So again, who are you? Are you the job seeker? Are you the professional in your industry that has some information to share? Who are you? And that ought to reflect your Twitter account. So you want to make sure that you're following companies and people of interest and retweet their posts retweet interesting uh, or post different articles, retweet articles that people post. The more you retweet people's uh, tweets, it will encourage them to then perhaps go back and follow you and so forth and uh, certainly expand your network while you're doing it. One sneaky hint that I might suggest you do is to use Google Alerts to receive up-to-the-minute information and, and then post about it. So on Google, you can set up an alert on a various topic, whether it's um, a location or an industry or whatever it might be, and Google will alert you whenever something is mentioned about that topic online. You can then uh, decide if that's something worth retweeting or talking about, either on your, your uh, LinkedIn account as well, but certainly in Twitter, you can tweet about that and uh, come across as someone who, who is really up to the minute on, on that theme, on that topic. So that's a little, uh, little suggestion there for you. LinkedIn. We, we encourage LinkedIn a lot here at the uh, WorkBC Employment Center. We, uh, we teach workshops on it, and we really do encourage clients to uh, jump on the LinkedIn bandwagon. I certainly do. Um, with, with LinkedIn, there is, uh, as many of you might know if you have a LinkedIn profile, there's a whole section where you can talk about your previous experience. Right? Very much like it would be on your resume, your previous position, who you did it with, you know, which company, the date, and you know, a breakdown of what it is you did there. So your experience section is where you've been. The summary section, which I'll chat about in just a minute, the summary section is where you'd like to be. And the summary section is where I would recommend you spend a lot of your time. The summary section can be found just below your contact card. Your contact card is the little uh, section on your LinkedIn profile that includes your photo and perhaps a headline of what it is you do. And as well, it also includes your LinkedIn URL. So that's a direct link that people can click on in order to get uh, uh, diverted back to your public profile. So the summary section is located just below your contact card and you have 2,000 characters to use here. Remember, the summary section is to tell people where you would like to go. You have a lot of freedom with this section. Uh, but again, we want to remember that when we're online, we have short attention spans. We're like children with short attention spans. So we really do want to deliver the information in, in the quickest, uh, easiest way possible. So when we're talking about the summary section, I might suggest you break up the information by using subheadings and then below each subheading writing short paragraphs. Now when I say short, I'm talking about three, maybe four lines. You can have multiple paragraphs under each subheading, but each paragraph really ought to be no more than three or four lines. So I would definitely recommend that. Use the personal pronoun here. Refer to yourself as I in the summary section. It humanizes you a little bit more. This is also a really great spot to include a lot of key words. So key words are words that recruiters or human resources professionals might be entering in when they're searching for qualified candidates. Your summary section is a great place to insert keywords there. Words that might be more prominent in your industry. Sending customized requests. I mentioned earlier on about the importance of quality versus quantity, and this is really important. When you first log into LinkedIn, 
LinkedIn will suggest a bunch of people that you might want to consider connecting with, and they'll make it very easy for you. Their photos will show up with the words connect just underneath their photo. If you click on that, LinkedIn will send a defaulted request to that person to connect with you on LinkedIn. Something like, I'd like to add you to my professional network on LinkedIn. I might recommend you take it a step further. Write your own customized request. So rather than clicking on the word connect, might I suggest you click on their photograph to go directly to their profile. View their profile first and foremost, read their summary section, uh, and then invite them to join you and your network on LinkedIn. And if you do it that way, that, that longer way, if you will, LinkedIn will allow you to write your own customized message. And this is where you can explain to this person where perhaps you may have met already. Um, so give them a little bit of information. You know, I, you and I spoke, had a great conversation at the North Vancouver Chamber of Commerce Business After Five event last week. I'd really like to connect with you here on LinkedIn. Something along those lines. Another really great way to expand your network and to build up your profile on LinkedIn is by joining groups. You can search for groups up in the search bar, up at the top of the, of the page, or in the interest section, again, up at the top of the page on your LinkedIn profile. You can search for various groups, and LinkedIn will also suggest various groups depending on the information that it picks up from your profile. Um, all the groups do have administrators, so you need to first request to be added to their group, and you'll often hear back within maybe an hour or sometimes a couple of days if they've accepted you into the group. Right away, you now have access to other members of the group as well. Recommendations are so much more effective on LinkedIn than endorsements. Endorsements are good. Recommendations are great. And the beautiful thing about recommendations is that they show up directly on your profile under the job that you were recommended for. Under, so that would be under the experience section. Endorsements are easy to give. They're very easy to give, which kind of takes away from some of the credibility. I've been endorsed in the past for things I've never even done. So I've chosen not to accept those endorsements. Um, but LinkedIn does make it easy to endorse people. And again, when you log into LinkedIn, it will say, you know, it'll, it'll put up a couple of your, um, your network and, and suggest, would you endorse, endorse so-and-so for these skills? And all you need to do is simply click on the, bu the button, and it makes it very easy, which also takes away some of the impact, I think, that it can have. A recommendation, however, means that you've taken time to actually write in real words, in real paragraphs, uh, what it was like working for this person and the, and the excellent skills and so forth that this person has. And then that recommendation will show up on their profile, and if someone writes one for you, it'll show up on your profile. You can choose to hide them, of course, but hey, why would you? Um, you can also print out a listing of all those recommendations and bring them with you to, uh, to job interviews. So um, write recommendations and give endorsements. The best way to receive recommendations and endorsements is to either give them, uh, please give them out truthfully, um, to either give them to other members, other uh, people within your network, or you can go right out and you can request that someone um, write a recommendation for you. And then finally, customizing your LinkedIn URL. Your LinkedIn URL can be found, as I mentioned already, in your contact card at the top of your LinkedIn profile. Your contact card, again, includes your photograph and a headline, perhaps. So again, the headline is either the position that you're currently in or what it is you do uh, on a professional level. The LinkedIn URL can be found just below your photo. And LinkedIn will give you a defaulted URL. So it would usually include your name and then a long list of numbers after that. You can change that to include just your name um, and maybe other, uh, another couple few numbers if somebody else also has your name on LinkedIn. And all you need to do is click on that URL and it will open up and allow you to make the change so that it's much more customized to your name. You can then take that LinkedIn URL and you can put it up at the top of your resume along with your other contact details. 
You can put it in your email signature. You can put it on a web page, on a business card. Um, and then what people can do is click on that directly if they're, of course, viewing it on online. And it will automatically redirect them to your public LinkedIn profile. So you do want to make sure that your public LinkedIn profile has enough information on it to be enticing for that person. Um, and you can always go into and manage your settings and it, can, and it will allow you to customize which sections you include in your public URL, your public profile. I'd like to finish with a quote that I think really demonstrates the positive impact networking can have on your job search. The richest people in the world look for and build networks. Everyone else looks for work. Because there's job searching, then there's strategic job searching. Put the control back in you. Thank you very much. I'd like to open it up for questions now. What a wonderful presentation. Thank you much, Chantel, uh, so much, Chantel. There's a lot of uh, helpful tips and advice. And uh, we definitely do have some questions, so I'll start that off. Um, so from one individual, you mentioned we should try to figure out who will be at a networking event. How do we do that? Yeah, so that's, that's actually a very good question. Um, for example, I mentioned the North Vancouver Chamber of Commerce here in North Vancouver. Uh, they will often let you know who will be attending some of the events as well. Um, so you'll get an idea of some companies that might be going there, um, something along those lines. Also, other networking events might have guest speakers, and so they will have, you know, brief bios on those guest speakers, and this will allow you to do a little bit of research first on who is there uh, in terms of who will be speaking, and then from there you can go and, and, and of course, have a conversation with this person, and it's an, you know, excellent way to, uh, to network as well. Um, Another way that you, can, that you can find out who might be going there, if, for example, you're taking a course or a workshop, it will often let you know the types of people that might be uh, attending those workshops or those training sessions, uh, people in a specific uh, industry or, or whatnot, and uh, that, that won't necessarily give you specific individuals, but it will give you an overview of the types of people that would be there, which I think could be quite useful as well in preparing that, that presentation speech for yourself. Perfect. That's very, very helpful. Uh, a second question is, uh, as a newcomer, what are some ways I can build up my network? That's, that's a very common question that we hear at the WorkBC Employment Center as well. And so I'm really happy that you asked that question. Uh, the, the first thing that I, that I do say is start with associations. So if there are associations that are uh, relevant to your career or to the training that you've had, you might want to consider uh, joining that because the associations are there in order to help you build that network and, and to represent you out in the industry. And then take advantage of any you know, free training or workshops they might have, any conferences. They often will also host networking events. Um, so that's a really great place to start. Um, again, have a look at your local chamber or uh, here again in Vancouver, we have a Vancouver Board of Trade. They host uh, plenty of networking events as well. Meetups, meetup.com. Um, you can use meetup.com for uh, you know, new newcomer groups, uh, English speaking groups. Uh, that's a really nice way as well to, to kind of build up the network. And then of course through social media. Um, you can join groups on LinkedIn, start following people on Twitter. Um, again, it's really about having that clear direction that what is your objective when it comes to networking and then kind of customizing your approach based on that. Uh, finally, coming to an employment center, uh, you know, there are employment centers throughout, throughout Canada. They're all no-cost, government-funded employment centers, and they are excellent, excellent ways to expand your network. Sign up for one of their free uh, job search workshops, and then from there, it, uh, it can just grow. Perfect. Those are a lot of great, uh, great suggestions, I think, for everyone. Um, and this next question actually will uh, lead into with that. Um, so how, do, how would you maintain a relationship with a new contact once you've uh, made that initial contact? Mm -hmm. So uh, 
like I mentioned earlier, you do want to find out a little bit about that person as well, and you might find um, something really find out something really interesting about them. Um, I, I just recently wrote a blog about this webinar. It's on, the, it's on the Charity Village one, and in that I mentioned about how you might be chatting with someone who works in your industry, but you might find that that person's real passion is in something completely different. And it might, it might so be that you know someone who this person can now talk to that's more relevant to their passion. So uh, pay attention and listen to ways that you can give back to that person and then make suggestions back. Send them relevant articles, introduce them uh, either through email or on, uh, on LinkedIn to people that you think would be um, you know, relevant on a professional level for them or even on a personal level. They might disclose that their real passion is baking. Um, and um, so, you know, kind of pay attention to those, uh, to those prompts that they give you. Another way, when you are out doing more of what we call an information meeting, so it's where you're getting information from someone who might be working in your uh, industry or career of choice, the, one of the last questions you'll have for that person is, is there anyone else you would recommend that I talk to? And so when they, when they give you one or two other names to follow up on and you go and reach out to that person, make sure to go back to the original person and, and fill them in on what's happening. Thank you so much for giving me Bob's phone number. He and I will be meeting next week for coffee. I really appreciate it. And then once you meet Bob for coffee, you might then follow up again with the original contact and let them know how your meeting with Bob went. And that's just a really great way to maintain that contact. Touch base with them on social media, connect with them on LinkedIn, follow them if they're on Twitter, retweet things that they say, like articles that they post on LinkedIn. Not overly, of course, you want to do it in a way that is genuine, but that's also a really great way to maintain those connections. That's great. Uh, we oh, we also have quite a few questions. I'm wondering if you can give you uh, some tips for people who, you know, may have a little bit of a social anxiety when they, um, you know, when they network, uh, meeting people for the first time, or classified as introverts. Um, any sort of tips to kind of help them overcome that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, that's where social media can can definitely come in handy. <laughs> Um, so uh, again, if you're not active on social media or if you have the accounts, dust them off and start working that way. Um, again, joining groups, those groups on LinkedIn are very, very valuable uh, ways to expand a network. So um, start with social media. Another thing is um, don't network with the purpose of networking professionally. Uh, go out there and do things that you enjoy doing, just maybe uh, make a little bit more of an effort to talk to one person perhaps in the group. Um, again, that's, it's just about expanding who knows of your existence. So by talking to maybe one person in the running group that you've just joined or in a, a workshop that you're, that you're starting to take, that will increase your network by at least them plus their network. Um, so start on social media join the groups, comment on people's articles, get your name out there that way, and then in person, focus more on things that are uh, things you actually enjoy doing. Don't necessarily do it with the intention of expanding your network. Try to uh, take off some of the stress by making it much more natural. Con consider your hobbies and your interests more, and then build from there. That's wonderful. Um, in regards to another question now, uh, how can I use Facebook as a professional networking tool? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, this one's interesting because people are always like, Facebook, I don't know if I buy it. Um, but you can. You can use Facebook as a, as a networking tool. But here's the thing is that it depends on how you've been using Facebook um, up to this point. So what, again, it goes back to what your identity is. And so if people up to this point identify you on Facebook as kind of the irresponsible <laughs> individual who maybe didn't make the best choices last weekend, um, and then all of a sudden you want to start coming across as, um, uh, as professional and, and so forth, um, you, you might want to consider first and foremost the, um, the image you already have amongst your current network. Um, some people that I've talked to have actually opened up Facebook accounts with names that are more um, um, relevant to their professional uh, um, 
image, I guess you can say. So they have a Facebook account that reflects the actual name they, they put out there on a professional level, and then they might have more of a personal one. Um, but you, either way, you can use it. You can put uh, rec general requests out. Um, you know, I'm really interested in in the insider, you know, in insider tips of Lululemon. Does anybody have any information out there? Send me a direct message. Um, you know, and then and depending on most people have more connections on Facebook than they do on any other social media platform. So you're really reaching a, a pretty vast audience there. Um, another way to do it too is if for example, you do have a contact on Facebook and they put you into, you know, they, they set up a meeting perhaps with somebody over at Lululemon and you had a great meeting, you might want to post that up on your Facebook, uh, on your update, on your, your profile update and say, had an excellent meeting today over at Lululemon, thank you so much Sally Smith for organizing that and you want to tag Sally Smith because uh, this will now go to all of Sally Smith's contacts and chances are if she put you in contact with someone over at Lululemon, I'm sorry I'm just using them as an example, um, but if Sally put you in touch with someone over at Lululemon, chances are she has a lot of Lululemon uh, workers on her Facebook uh, as well. So they will be able to see that and see that you're uh, you know, really interested in Lululemon and so forth and that might open up uh, some lines of communication as well. And then of course following pages of companies that you're interested in, in pursuing and so forth and uh, being proactive on company Facebook pages as well is uh, a very smart way to do it. That's really helpful because every once in a while, um, specifically with my role with Charity Village and dealing with job seekers, I do get that question every once in a while, especially in regards to Facebook, so that helps me to uh, give some, uh, some of that advice as well. Mm -hmm. um, we've got time for one or two more questions. So one of them was, um, you didn't mention anything about bringing business cards um, to a networking event. Do you feel that that's important? I do, and thank you very much for bringing that up. I do think that having business cards is important and having them to hand out at, at various networking events is important. Um, the thing for, with a lot of people who are currently out of work, however, is they're a little bit unsure about what to put on a business card because um, a lot of us have our job title and the company that we're working for. Uh, so if you are going to be putting together business cards to bring with you or to, you, you should always just really have them on your person. Um, make sure that it lists, of course, your full name. Um, it could also list your, your LinkedIn uh, public URL, your, uh, your cell number, and, and a professional sounding email. And it can also have uh, a very brief summary of your skill set. Again, remembering the skills that you have and want to use. Just because you're good at it doesn't necessarily mean you'll want to do it. So a skill set um, that gives them a, a pretty good summary of what it is you can do. Um, another option to, to include on your business card, and uh, I'm forgetting the term, but it's a scanning code, a barcode that um, people can scan. So they can scan your business card and there are plenty, you can, there are websites that are for free that are free that you can input the information, your contact information, and develop your own barcode to then put on your business card. And someone can scan that with their phone if they have the app to scan it, and it will automatically take your contact information and put it in their contacts list on their phone. That's perfect. Yeah, a few people had written in saying that it's called a QR code. Yes, thank so you, QR code. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, so we'll have we'll have just have one more question before we uh, wrap up this webinar. Um, do you have any tips uh, for someone to you know maybe not get stuck chatting with one or two two people at an event? Uh, maybe something along the lines of you know they get chatting but they want to sort of remove themselves and chat with other people. Do you have any advice on how to do yeah. that? <laughs> I love that question. That's a good one. Um, you know, as I mentioned before, I had my wing woman last time I went to a networking event. Um, so I do recommend that you go in pairs. Um, but of course, if you go in pairs or, or more than that, you could be tempted to just uh, stay in the corner <laughs> with each other. So do your best to challenge each other to get out there and, um, and network. And I think uh, a lot of couples might have this as well when they go to parties, is they might have some kind of um, uh, indicator when a conversation is not going well or when they might need to be saved from a conversation. So if you're there with a wingman or a wingwoman, you might want to establish that uh, early on. 
right? If I'm stuck in a conversation with someone and you see me, you know, we'll maintain eye contact with each other. And if you see me do this little gesture, it means I might need some rescuing. Um, you can do that. You can do that. Or you can, you can always say something like, um, you know, if it's, a, if it's a, a place where you might get food or coffee, you could always say, you know, excuse me, I'm, I just find myself to be quite parched and I'm going to run over and grab myself a glass of water. Uh, but I definitely enjoy chatting with you and perhaps we can chat a little bit later on. Um, but yeah, it, again, it's about asserting those needs. Uh, and uh, so those things do take a little bit of practice when you're, when you're wanting to cut a conversation uh, a little bit short. But um, I've oftentimes actually said, sorry, I'm just going to stop you right there. I need to head over there to do whatever it might be. Um, but, you know, find an appropriate time to do that and then maybe just interject and say that. I'm just going to stop you right there. I just, I just noticed a, someone that I really want to talk to and then, you know, but I'd love chatting with you. Maybe we can chat again, you know, in a, in a little while and then head off in the direction of your imaginary person. Oh, that's perfect. Thank you. Those are some really helpful tips. All right. So, well, I want to thank you uh, again, Chantel. This was such a wonderful presentation. So much. You gave so much helpful tips and advice. Um, now, before we sign off, I want to remind everyone that we'll be following up with you by email with the webinar recording and presentation slides. We will also include a link to a very short survey. So if you could just take a minute to fill it out, it would be really helpful for us in further refining our webinar content and the delivery of them. You will have an opportunity in the survey to let us know if there are any topics you would like to see covered in a future session. Thank you again for joining us, and I hope you have a wonderful rest of the day.